Since you were last here, I've spent £101 million. I got a little bit carried away. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Newcastle. Today is episode number, I want to say, 17 of our series here in FM22. The FM beta is very nearly over. I am anticipating a match engine update in an episode or two. That is a scary prospect, as is our Newcastle team, because right now... We're in second. We started the season well. Today, two away games against Arsenal and Bayern Munich. Yes, that is right. Our Champions League group has been drawn. Bayern, Ajax, Benfica. I feel like it could have been a lot, lot worse. Equally, there isn't like an obvious weak link. I think ultimately today's game against Bayern is going to be a bit of a, an introduction to European football at this highest level. Not a game I'm expecting to win. If we can get anything from today's get matches, that would be pretty good. Now, in the intro, I talked about transfers. Let's talk about them. Um, it was a busy deadline day. A few sales, a few purchases. Let's start with the outs. Matias Arezzo left to go to Southampton. Never got a work permit. Never really developed. He's now got one playing in the championship, which I don't really understand. But we cashed in on him at 20 years old. I don't think he's going to get near the first team. And at 7 million was not a bad sum of money. Elsewhere, Lissandro Martinez has left for Bayern. So a chance we might take on our former man today. As you can see here, we sold him for the exact same fee we paid for him. Which, given how average at best he was for us last year... I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Elsewhere, Jamal Lewis left for £12.25 million. We have plenty of defenders. He was so far down the pecking order that to cash in on him made sense. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek also left on loan. Let's talk about the ins, shall we? Um, yeah, I've made a big one. Gvardiol is a new club record transfer, 21 years old, left-footed centre-back. We have, like, one of the best defences in the world now. Like, I have no excuses for if our defence does badly other than it is my tactics. Gvardiol has joined us for £84 million. That was his release clause. Had a couple of good years at Leipzig, but they didn't qualify for European football in the Champions League last year, so he wanted out. Ultimately, we've picked him up. His value is now between £191 and £214 million. He's a top quality player. He's 21. He sorts out a position in our team for the next decade. Probably overpaid, but he, yeah, he, he's the best player in the world at his position that I could sign. He's an upgrade on Martinez, that's for sure. And the other player we picked up, which was another Red Bull player, this time playing over in Salzburg, is Benjamin Sesko. Now, the reason for picking up Sesko was a little bit of a concern about our strength in depth at the striking position. When you look at our strikers, we were just lacking someone of the same mould as Calvert-Lewin. Players like Adiemi, very quick, very technical, good at kind of breaking through the line, getting on the end of through balls and such. Similar with Barboza. Not great in the air, but a good kind of advance forward. Really, with Calvert-Lewin injured and the prominence of heading in the current match engine, I felt like we needed a bit of a weapon with balls into the box in the air. And I think Benjamin Sesco gives us that for a really good price. Signed for 17 million. Not all of that is up front. Considering that we sold Arezzo for 7 or 8 million, to get Sesco in for this price, I think is great business. You can see his value has now shot up for between 69 and 92 million, which is very nice. And uh, he's a great forward. A useful player. Scored on his debut as well. Now, since we're last here, one game played that match against Manchester United at home at St. James's Park. We were dominant. They took the lead in this game very early on, but we didn't let that get us down and we came back stronger. Really, really nice goal here. Adiemi bringing it forward back to Liveramento, back post for Sesco. That aerial threat that, as I said, we've lacked without Calvert-Lewin was there. And into the second half we went. Gvardiol involved in the play. It was Zakaria with the assist. Gabby came on off the bench, struck it home. And it finished 2-1. This is a really, really good display. Worth noting, we were playing our five at the back system, which we are going to be playing for the next two games away from home. And uh, I think we were worth our lead. A 57% possession, loads of XG. Um, yeah, we look really good. Gvardiol, Sesco, only at the club a couple of days going into this, played exceptionally. So in terms of team for today's first match, taken on Arsenal, this is a big one away from home. They've started the season well 
We've started it pretty well too, and this is the squad we are going to go with. At the back, Gvardiol comes straight in to play left centre-back with Tomori and Mukiele alongside him. Livakovic is back from injury. Digny and Livromento hold down the full-back positions. Of course, Mbabu still out with an injury. Worth noting, Ransford Yeboa also out injured at the moment. Uh, going to be out for a little while, which was another reason to bring in Benjamin Sesko, really. In the midfield, it's going to be Musiala and Rice. Just as a little reminder, we've changed up the player roles here. Last year, it was a ball winner on defend alongside a Mazala. This year, I'm looking for the two players to kind of work alongside each other a little bit more. Um, I'm hoping that's going to result in his holding onto the ball a little bit better. Higher up the pitch, Almada plays advanced playmaker. Calvert-Lewin and Adiemi going to be leading the line for this one. Plenty of options on the bench. A really strong bench, actually, now. The likes of Godfrey, Emerson Royal, Michaelenko, Zakaria, Teliso, Willock, Barboza, Sesco. That is a really, really good bench. And that really gives me confidence that going into Europe this year and going into cup games this year, we are going to be able to rotate things more than we did last year. This is a pretty big game for us. Arsenal away is a game that I expect us to win if we want to finish top four. Certainly, we've got to give it a good shot. A lot of eyes going to be on Gavardiol, of course, playing left centre-back today very well suited to the wide center back role and of course uh, just the team as a whole needs to turn up better yesterday in yesterday's episode we weren't convincing we weren't very good we need to be better today Tommy Yasu out from the back for Arsenal here Graven Birch bringing it forward they've got Graven Birch and Marcus Antonio in centre mid that's a scary duo of young talent Arsenal squad is good they've got Saka at the back post who hits it on the volley and within five minutes first blood Arsenal it's Saka with it. What's that Gvardiol's man? What's that Gvardiol's man? I mean, there is Gvardiol. I don't think it is, actually. I think that is on Luca Digny. Tierney's ball from deep was crazy to the back post. Saka on the volley. Cool, calm, collected finish into the bottom corner. Not ideal. Of course, when we took on United, we conceded in five minutes. So this sets us up perfectly for an inspirational comeback. I hope. Throw in on the far side here. Almada with the ball. Plays it inside to Musiala. Can he finish this? He brings it into the box. He hits it just wide of the post. Of course, Arsenal were one of a few teams looking at Musiala in the summer. It was Barcelona who triggered his old release clause. He decided to stay at the club. Maybe he's going to have a point to prove here. Mukiele bringing it forward. What a run. What an effort just over the bar. If we were concerned about kind of rolling on our back and dying here without giving up much of a fight... The early signs are promising, having conceded, although they might have a chance here. Who got that off the line? I don't know how that's not gone in. Uh, I'm grateful it hasn't gone in, though. Five minutes left of the half. Both teams having a fair few chances. Looking at the balance of play, we've had more of the ball, maybe slightly edged out the play. I certainly think we can feel a tad unlucky to be behind. Arsenal probably have had the better chances in the half. I'm going to tell the players I've got faith in them to improve. Some really good reactions there. As we talked about going into the game, we've got some pretty good players on the bench to really change a match. And well, if we go down here, I might look to make those changes. Corner back post headed in. Dembele's there to set piece, which is always a disappointing way to concede. And uh, will Arsenal double their lead within five minutes of the second half? Getting a little bit of deja vu. They've scored twice within five minutes of the half commencing. This time Dembele, easy finish for him. Not great from us. Let's make some changes. I, I don't necessarily feel like this is an issue with the system, more so the personnel. I'm going to bring in Sesco. Um, elsewhere, Luca Digny's on a booking that scares me. Livramento's had a terrible game, as has Gavardiol. He's on a 6.2. That's concerning. Uh, I'm going to bring in Emerson Royal, I think. I, I hesitated. I've, I'm, I'm certain. I need to be more, what's the word, concise with my decision making. Those are the two changes we're going to do. Okay, double change made. We've brought in Emerson Royal. We've brought on Sesco as well. Calvert-Lewin just struggling a little bit for fitness here. Can we get a goal back? Luca Dinia whips it in. Sesco very nearly got there. Might get a second chance here as well. Well, ball whipped back post. Adiemi gets it away. Emerson now to mop up the pieces. Can we bring it forward? Mukiele inside to Almada. Musiala, loads of space on with Luca Dinia on the left. Goes to Emerson on the right, who equally has space. He puts it in. A floating, teasing ball. Ramsdale makes a save. Adiemi still with it. Emerson Royal hits it. A weird goal. A good goal. We'll take it. 2-1. We're back in the game. And with some patient probing play, really penning Arsenal back, we eventually found a breakthrough. I thought that shot from range there was a bit of a waste, but we've ridden our luck, and one of the subs has just come on and scored. And to think I wanted to sell Emerson in deadline day. 
and no one bidded on him. I'm an idiot. Anyway, there is a highlight straight away here. Could we complete a very quick turnaround against Arsenal? I felt like at half time we were unfortunate to be behind. I kind of maintain that sentiment. We've looked good here. Adam Emmy is through. Can he finish this? He should finish this. He does finish it. It's Declan Rice with another assist. Not for the first time. His passing range has been flexed this season. Because Rice has, I believe, the, the kind of player preferred move to tries long range passes. This ball here is crazy. Adi Emmy, perfectly timed run, uses his pace, gets in behind on his weaker foot. And from 2-0 down to 2-2, two, two. Arsenal look rocked. 10 minutes left in this game. I have got one sub left in my back pocket. You can see here, it's been an incredibly even game. In terms of what my last sub might be, Almar does not look great today. I'm going to bring in Joe Willock against his former club. He's going to play as an advanced playmaker on a support or attack. You can see here, he can do this role. Can he get us the all-important goal? No. 2-2 two, two is going to finish here at the Emirates. You know what? That's a pretty good performance, all things considering. A tricky game. Arsenal in this save game are very, very good. They are like, you know, a regular top four finisher. With that result, we go top of the table, albeit with a few of the teams behind us having games in hand, which if they win, they would go ahead of us. But I don't know. 2-2 two, two against Arsenal, considering we were down 2-0. It's hard not to be happy with that. Adiemi. Praise his performance. Another really, really good performance by him. He's had a really good start to the year. Three goals, one assist, 7.38 average rating in the league. I mean, when you look at it, he's leading the way with the goal scoring and the performances. Hopefully, we can have another similar performance. We've got Bayern Munich in three days' time. It's away from home. Doesn't get much more difficult than this. Let's see how we get on. Okay, game number two here against Bayern Munich. I am praying, please, Gvardiol, have a better game in this one. He was not great against Arsenal. I've spent I've spent £84 million on a man who gets a 6.2 against Arsenal. He's got to do better in this next one. In terms of team selection, I'm, I'm looking to rotate things a little bit this year throughout. So, a few changes. Willick's going to come into the team today for Almada, who hasn't started great. Elsewhere, mukiele has been a little bit hit and miss. So, we're going to change things there. Um, one thing I've just realised, and if you've managed in England, you'll be aware of this. The Premier League allow nine subs now. Um, obviously, that's not the case in the Champions League. We're only allowed seven. So, uh, Van der Voort, off the bench you come. Elsewhere, Almada, you've upset me too much recently. I'm not having you on the bench either. Um, we'll go goalkeeperless and hope that Livakovic doesn't get injured. Okay, so for this game, that buying a plane to bits are up front. I've got, I mean, they've let go of Lewandowski, who's of course gone to Real Madrid. They've got Sabitzer up front. That's weird, isn't it? Besides that, it's a pretty strong team with Muller down the middle. As for our team, obviously, we talked about Godfrey coming in um, and Willock coming in. Also worth noting, Michaelenko and Emerson Royal going to start at wing back today. This match is kind of a free hit. I think this result here is not going to determine how we do in the Champions League. If we could cause a shock upset, great. I am using this as a bit of an opportunity just to rotate a few of the more demanding positions, I suppose, in the team. The wingbacks do have to run quite a lot in this system. I don't really know what my expectations should be in this game here. I mean, it's Bayern Munich away. I feel like any team that you manage, Bayern Munich away is a tricky one. I suppose with all the money we've spent on our defence, a good defensive performance would be the main order of the day. And, well, given the fact we've survived 35 minutes, it's not been a bad start, although a set piece here... Very nearly found its way in. Michaelenko cleared it off the line. I don't know. How should I feel? I admit, nil nil at half time. I've, I, I said nil nil at half time and it wasn't over. And now Calvert Lewin's about to get red carded, isn't he? We have 45 minutes away against Bayern to hold on. It's not ideal. Okay, so in terms of what I'm actually going to do here, bit of a bold change. I'm going to bring in Sesco for Willock. So, sorry, Willock, I know you were looking forward to playing today. Um, we're going to go with two advanced forwards. I'm going to tell Declan Rice to just play on defend, I think, and we'll even drop him deeper just to try and sit men behind the ball. Musiala by comparison. Um, I'm going to play it as a centre mid on attack. Did you remember this role exists? I feel like no one ever uses the centre mid on attack. It's not very fashionable. We've got to change things up here, haven't we? There is no point in looking for the overlap. Hit early crosses, play more direct. Sexy football is kind of going out the window here. In transition, 
um, will regroup still, distribute quickly, distribute over defense, out of possession. We're, we're just going to drop a little bit. It's it's going to be a hard end to this game. The fact that it's 0-0 at half time with 11 men was impressive. If it's 0-0 with 10 men after 90, I would be pleasantly surprised. Just realized probably should go to cautious mentality rather than attacking as well in this game as Kimmich has the ball on this near side. Can we put in a heroic, memorable defensive performance? Is this going to be a game that the Geordie faithful look back on as a classic? The day that Newcastle held Bayern whilst down a man on their Champions League return. That's what I want to believe is going to happen. We have got defending to do here. Goretzka hits it from range into the top corner. I feel sick. Of all the players to get sent off and really sabotage our efforts this game, Calvin Lubin wasn't the man I had down as being the person who would end up doing it. It's a really weird red card. Makes me very grateful that we've got Sesco, who is of a very similar mould, because we're going to need him for the next few Champions League games with Calvert-Lewin suspended. 30 minutes left of this game to try and endure. Can we keep them to one? Could we catch them on the break? Sesco and Adiemi, of course, as I already mentioned earlier, they played up front for Salzburg together for a year. They, they should have this understanding. They should be just a natural fit as our new strike pairing. I don't know how much service they're going to get today, really. <laughs> they're kind of just up on their, their lonesome, a bit isolated from the rest of their team, hoping that between them they can make something happen. Weigel plays it forward. Narbury's going to keep this in, isn't he? Alfonso Davies, loads of space to bring it in. Back with Weigel. Goretzka now with it. Hits it. Very nearly scored the exact same goal as last time. It's still 1-0. We're fine. We're 25 minutes left. I mean, is, uh, part of me thinks we might as well just go for it now. Should we? Should we go for it? This might be really dumb, but I'm going to try. Emerson's not been great today. Declan Rice is on a 6.2. Get off the pitch. Bring on Taliso. He's got a point to prove. He's playing against his former club. If there's scripting in this game, Taliso will now score a banger to make it 1-1. Just to be clear, I don't actually believe there is scripting in Football Manager. Um, um, if there is, uh, make something happen here, please, game. I I've asked nicely. I've asked politely. Taliso, just shoot. <laughs> Maybe not from there. He's in his own half. Michael Enko bringing it forward. Could we have a rare chance? We've not really done anything going forward. We've not seen anything of ourselves going forward. Guardiola, big ball in. I thought for a second Addy Emi was going to get on the end of it. I started to believe. I mean, ultimately, it's 1-0 with 15 minutes left against Bayern away, where we've been down a man for half the match. That's pretty impressive. There could even be a chance. Sesco's there, he scored. The game plan was work. Just get it forward to the old Salzburg lads and let them figure it out. It's 1-1. Do I change the players back to be more conservative now? No, nah, no, nah, we go for it. Taliso, by the way, did get the secondary assist. Still trying to make secondary assists a thing. Um, Sesco, nice finish at the near post. Maybe he is the Calvert-Lewin replacement. Well, I mean, we're going to find out with time. Straight into another highlight, though. That scares me slightly. Musiala with the ball. Just get it forward quickly. Mukiele, fresh off the bench, playing right back in this game. Godfrey's looked pretty good at right centre-back. Not had a great deal to do today, but what he's had to do, he's done reasonably well, all things considering. Tamori, back to Livakovic. Still trying to play our nice brand of football a little bit here. Sesco has the ball, hits it. Neuer makes the stop. It was very nearly 2-1. Adiemi and Sesco proving a little bit of a handful. But Bayern, I mean, we have a corner. Would it be mad to suggest we could score from this? Maybe. Taliso whips it in. It's headed away. Michaelenko. Maybe have a shot. He scored a banger last episode. Could he do another one here? Or maybe cross from there. Dinks it in. Headed away. I almost feel like we're about to have a goal. I'm anticipating it. Adiemi. Where are you going, son? Nowhere. Hernandez deals with it. Ten minutes left. I think it's time for one lash out of demand more. Five minutes left here. I expect Bayern to really push and go on the attack here and try and get a winner, which could leave them open to the break. But to be honest, I'll happily take 1-1. And 1-1 we will take. That is a crazy good performance. I think we can be really proud of that. It's not an exciting game of a load of goals. Sesco was our best performer. But considering that Calvert-Lewin decided to be an absolute melon and get sent off for a pointless tackle, the fact that we've managed to come through perhaps the most difficult game we're going to have of the group stage and draw it 1-1 is pretty good. If you had told me today two draws against Arsenal and Bayern, probably would have bitten your hands off for that. It keeps our unbeaten start to the season going, although 
We haven't played too many games just yet. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, not entirely sure just yet. I'm looking ahead to the games against Ajax, Chelsea, Man City and Bayern, thinking some of those games in some kind of order is probably a good time to come back. But anyway, gang, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. We will be back in November for more Champions League group stage games. Man City and Chelsea in the league look like tasty games. In terms of how the table is looking, Liverpool are currently top. We are in third. Leicester, the surprise packages in the early start of the season. Hopefully we're going to be up here still when I return next time. And hopefully I see your faces next time. If you've got until the end of the video, as always, do drop a like on it. And well, until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.